Good evening, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Welcome to this prayer at the close of the day. It is Monday. It is the 30th day of October, year of our Lord, 2023. Cool, cool day out there. Much colder than we've been experiencing, but just think about how good this will feel in February and March. Uh, and it's fall, so we're due. Um, so anyway, do pray this finds you well, and we'll... Uh, getting underway here in, in just a moment. We do all have details tomorrow night, but we do have a, a youth event coming up this weekend. It'll be down in Galesburg. We're going to uh, bring the socks that we've collected. Thank you for, boy, there's a big pile of them at church. Thank you for those of you who have donated them. And we're going we're gonna to bring foods that are of uh, some of our favorite uh, heritage foods, things from our peculiar heritages. And I'm going to bring a, uh, well, it's going to be a surprise, but it, I was describing it to some of the youth, and that, that's where they, it was their idea to do these things. And I was describing what I would bring, and they're like, oh, that sounds really good. So and it's one of those things where everybody who comes into contact with our family, when I make that, really, regardless of their heritage, really like this, which means it's really tasty and it's not very good for you. But that'll be a youth event on, on uh, this weekend, a Sunday afternoon. And I'll have details for you later in the week. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and peace at the last. Amen. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praise to your name, O Most High, to herald your love in the morning, your truth at the close of the day. And again, according to to the daily lectionary. We're going to read from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew chapter 20, verses 1 through 16. For the kingdom of heaven is like a master of a house who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for a denarius a day, he sent them into his vineyard. And going out about the third hour, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace. And to them he said, You go into the vineyard, too, and whatever is right, I will give you. So they went, going out again about the sixth hour and the ninth hour, he did the same. And about the eleventh hour, he went out and found others standing. And he said to them, why do you stand here idle all day? They said to him, Because no one has hired us. He said to them, You go into the vineyard too. And when evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, Call the laborers and pay them their wages, beginning with the last up to the first. And when those hired about the eleventh hour came, each of them to receive a denarius, now when those hired first came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them also received a denarius. And on receiving it, they grumbled at the master of the house, saying, These last worked only an hour, and you have made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But he replied to them, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for a denarius? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to this last worker as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or do you begrudge my generosity? So the last will be first, and the first last. And that is the Gospel of the Lord. Now that whole parable is bracketed by First in verse 30, so the last verse of, of Matthew 19, we hear this, but many, and this is our Lord speaking, but many who are first will be last and the last first. And then we hear at the end of uh, this section tonight, verse 16, so the last will be first and the first last. Notice how he, he our Lord brackets this parable in by those statements and, and, and you know, last, first, first, last, and then first, last, last, first. Uh, quite interesting what he does. And this parable, there's a couple of things going on here. Is that, first of all, the gifts of God are God's gifts, not ours. And things, and, and this is a theme that comes out of the Old Testament in a number of places, that God's gifts are his to do with what he chooses. 
And things that look unjust to our eyes do not matter to God. First of all, God's desire is that everyone would be saved, call upon his name. And sometimes that happens at deathbed or people have come to come to the faith late in life. And, and, and so that's the first thing we want to talk about in this parable. So, you know, he has the, the, these Pharisees and the Sadducees in mind who have grown up children of Abraham. They can trace their lineage to Abraham. And the church is now going to, it's on the, on the very cusp of going, to go, of going out into all the world. Pentecost, you know, his, his passion is coming very soon. We're in chapter 20 of Matthew. And then he's going to rise from the dead. Uh, 40 days after his resurrection, there's going to be the ascension. And then Pentecost, when the Spirit is poured out onto the church and out they go. Out they go, carrying the Spirit with them, the gifts of Christ with them. Those go hand in hand, by the way. And this is going to create some difficulties for this early church because you're going to have Jews who are, are, are willing with some qualifications to accept the Gentiles, except, you know, they, 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 you know, we've had to be circumcised. We've had to eat certain things. Actually, food becomes kind of a central issue, which is quite fascinating. But you think about it, you eat a number of times a day, uh, and all of a sudden you have these people coming in and saying, well, we only eat this and not that. So the Jews look at the Gentiles and they say, yeah, we're willing to have you be saved, but you've got to be circumcised. You've got to follow these mosaic ceremonies, the cleanliness laws, the, pur the purity laws. And here come the apostles saying, no, and this is going to, this is going to, it's actually going to cause some tension amongst the apostles until the first great council of the church. They're going to solve this question based on what our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ teaches in places like this. Uh, remember, whenever we have a controversy in the church, we answer it from the Word of God. Now, that's a little more complicated than it sounds because everybody claims to have the Word of God. So you have to back that up a step, like what is the Word of God? Some churches can, would look at a book, this book, the Bible, and say, well, it contains the Word of God. We say it is the Word of God. And then how does God work? what is the mode of salvation? How does Christ come to you? Do you have to come to him or does he come to you? All these things. Okay, so so then we do say, you know, we are word alone, our church. But we also acknowledge that that, that is an issue. So uh, anyway, uh, getting back to the point here is that, first of all, it is Christ's gift to give. And the church is going to go out and give it according to Christ's institution and command. And it's going to be puzzling. So we hear, okay, the laborers go out early in the morning. So when the when the light first hits the land, and they're going to get paid a day's wage, a denarius, a customary day's wage. And then we see those coming up much later in the day, and then you know, lunchtime, and then at the end of the day, there's maybe an hour's worth of work left. And he says, I will give you what is right as well. Whatever is right, I will give to you. Now, when payday comes, or that afternoon where they're going to get paid their wages, those who see you know, who gets paid first, the last, and they get a denarius, they get a full day's pay, even though they worked for an hour. And so those who started in the morning are like, well, we must get more, but they get the same thing. Now, faith, the faith, our Lord Jesus Christ, salvation is that. It's not a reward system. It is you're either in or out. And and those who come late to the dance, if you will, are just as welcome as those who've been there their whole life. Now, if you're like me, I was baptized as an infant and grew up in the church, and there's many people around me, same thing. So I have never known life apart from the faith. I've not known life as anything but a Christian. Thanks be to God for that. It's a really cool thing. But I rejoice, I should not grumble, but I rejoice when people come late. And we, sh you know, and, and I live in a relatively small town. It's not a tiny town. I live in some very tiny towns. But it's a small American city. And it's part of a larger group of cities, but still relatively small. Uh, you can get from one end to the other in a matter of minutes. And eh, it's a wonderful place to live. But anyway, e you're being a Christian all my life, it might be easy to look at those outside the church 
who come in late and say, especially when they get involved in lectures, like, well, review Ben, you know, this is my church. It's like, no, no, it's Christ church. There's no place for us to say, this is my church. Now, this is a church where maybe I've grown up and spent my whole life there. I have a number of people in my current congregation where I serve that have been there for their whole life, as their parents were, and maybe a generation or two before that. It's a 160-year-old, 160-plus-year-old church. So a long history. So there are a couple of families that their history goes back to the beginning. And yet it would be wrong, and they don't say this, but it would be wrong for them to say, well, I have some, you know, I have some greater authority in the church. I have some greater... I have some greater Christ. I get I have a better gift than yours because I've been a Christian all my life. No. Either in or out. A little bit of faith, a saving faith, those who come late, you know, don't worry about your tardiness. Uh, you are saved. Christ is yours just like it is ours. And all of Christ. It's not a partial Christ. You're not a partial Christian. You are a full Christian because it is the work of God. So Jesus is preparing them for Pentecost. It's like, you're going to go out and you're going to have people who have no relationship to Abraham whatsoever and, and have no relationship to our history, and yet they're going to belong. And they're going to be your brothers and sisters in Christ. And Paul is going to use phrases like, you know, they're, they're circumcised with a circumcision made without hands, pointing to baptism and then the Holy Spirit working through baptism. Now, they are just as much the children of Abraham as you are, you know, who've borne the burden of the whole day. Now, you know, that's, it's radical when you think about it, you know, and it can be a stumbling block. Now, the other point is the work. You know, rejoice that you've been able to work, do the good works of God your whole life if you were baptized as a Christian, and don't begrudge those who have come late. And again, in a small town, I didn't finish this thought earlier, people know. You know your friends know who you are. They know your life. You know theirs. You know what they struggle with. You know people who have not set foot in the church. Maybe their life is a train wreck. But all of a sudden, they wake up one day, and it's the work of the Holy Spirit, and they darken the doors of the church. And what do you think in that moment? No, it doesn't mean they march right up to communion and stuff like that. No, but they're there. And are they welcome there? Of course. I think we all understand that. But sometimes the, the reality of these things sort of slaps us in the face, and we think, wow, maybe I have treated poorly because they've shown up in the church. Or maybe somebody like you, grew up in the church and fell away, and you know how badly they fell away. They maybe destroyed your relationship and hurt you. And then all of a sudden, years later, they come into church. What are you going to do? Are you going to grumble, or are you going to look to Christ and say, well, it's your gift? And you're going to rejoice. Now, we also rejoice that we've been able to work our whole lives for the Lord, and, um, and, and that he's been able to use us to do uh, in our own weak ways whatever his will is. Um, and often to serve those people who do come late to the dance, if you will. And to serve those who we never know when they're going to come to the faith. Uh, but we go out and do good works amongst our neighbors, whether they're believers or not, because we know that God loves them as he loves us. Very interesting parable tonight, this parable. To, you know, so the, 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 the points you need to remember is like, first of all, the gospel the gift of forgiveness, life, salvation, forgiveness, the gift of Christ is God's to give, not ours to take. And God gives it to everybody. And when you're a Christian, you are a Christian. You're not partially a Christian uh, or waiting to be a Christian because you've maybe taken a step and you are a Christian. And then we do the good works that flow from being a Christian. So, uh, and some people have done that their whole lives, worked for the church, given their sweat and blood to the church, you know, keeping the lights on, fixing things, painting things, repairing things, paying the bills by just tithing, working all day, and these people come late, you know, and they want to use the, the they want to be part of the church the same way, and they are. So yeah, those are the take-home points. This is Christ's gift to give, and we rejoice in the works, whether it's short or long, that he gives us to do. All right, let's confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father, Almighty Maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. 
Lord, now you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Lord God, Heavenly Father, bless us by the gifts of your church with the faith to live in the promises of holy baptism, that we may cling to the forgiveness, salvation, and promise of life that is ours for the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord as we go about our callings, our daily work. We ask you to bless the unemployed, bless them with gainful employment, and while they wait for such deliverance, allow them, through us, their brothers and sisters, to meet the obligations that they have to keep food on their table and care for their loved ones. As always, we pray for the salvation and well-being of our neighbors, our next-door neighbors, the members of our community. May they come to know you and confess your saving work alongside us. We pray for schools, colleges, and seminaries of our institution, our church body, that they may be faithful in their various callings. Bless us with good government, with people that are eager to do your will, to care for the most vulnerable among us, especially the elderly and the unborn, that are wise in what they say, that they may use their mouths to build us up and not sow the seeds of hatred and discord. And we pray that uh, this good government would lead to peace, not only throughout the world, but in our communities. Heavenly Father, we ask you to be with those who are crying out to you healing. Myron, Dennis, Dave, Don, Wayne, Ardo, Kloss, Luray, Pat, Pam, Cecil, Lorena, Aaron, Allison, Allie, Scott, Amy, Don, Fern, Ashley, Camden, Jason, Bob, Jim, Clint, Beth, Chris, Eric, Tom, Paul, Brad, Christy, Jeff, Dylan, Jeremy, Marlis, Anita, Dave, Karen, Sue, Tim, Ron, Bert, Lori, Chris, John, Heather, Don, Liberty, Joe, Phil, Katie, Michelle, and all who cry out to you. Heavenly Father, place your healing hand upon them. All this we ask in the precious name of Jesus, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Visit our dwellings, O Lord, and in your great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of your only Son, our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day. And I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body, soul, all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now I'm going to sing a little bit of hymn 566, By Grace I'm Saved. By grace I'm saved, grace free and boundless. My soul believe and doubt it not. Why stagger at this word of promise? Has scripture ever falsehood taught? No, then this word must true remain. By grace you too will life obtain. By grace none dare lay claim to merit. Our works and conduct have no worth. God in his love sent our Redeemer, Christ Jesus to this sinful earth. His death did for our sins atone, and we are saved by grace alone. That stands as one and two of six of him, 566. By grace I'm saved. With that, my brothers and sisters, I bid you a pleasant evening, a blessed rest, and by God's grace, we'll see you tomorrow night. Good night.